Hi, this is Brian Gilman with Scout Support and welcome to Volume 2 of the Top Shelf Training Guide. In this video we will be focusing on creating part records and entering inventory in the Top Shelf. In Volume 1 we covered setting up users, permissions and user groups, and basic setup of your warehouse. That includes creating a client, location, and a bin to store product. Now that we have our warehouse and bin set up in our system, we need to create part records to start entering inventory. So let's talk about what a part record is in Top Shelf. A part record is a master record for your inventory. It contains all the information about the product like part number, description, the vendor you receive the product from, along with a number of customizable fields for additional information about the part. Keep in mind that creating a part record does not create inventory in the system. It simply creates the master record for that product. Inventory cannot be entered until you've first created a part record. There are three types of parts that can be created in Top Shelf. The first is an item. If the product does not require a serial number or a lot number, it will be considered an item. The only thing tracked with an item is the quantity of that product and the bin in which it resides. If the product requires a serial number to be tracked, it will be referred to as an asset in Top Shelf. An asset has a one-to-one -one ratio. Instead of seeing a quantity of that product, the system will list individual serial numbers. Lot controlled inventory allows you to track a group of products. Lot controlled product gives you the ability to track things like expiration date and utilize FIFO LIFO features. An example of a lot controlled product would be food or pharmaceutical products that require strict tracking from start to finish. Let's hop over to Top Shelf to create a part record. From the home page, navigate to Create Parts. The first thing to enter when creating a part record is the part name. This is the main identifier of the part in Top Shelf. Typically this will be a part or SKU number and is recommended to be under 19 characters for barcoding purposes. The reference code is only used by integrations with other software so there's no need to enter anything here. Next is the part description. In here you will enter a more detailed description of what this part is. This description can be used on barcode labels and printed forms so be mindful of how long you make your part descriptions. After description we need to select a vendor that we typically receive this product from. To create vendors in Top Shelf, navigate to Create Vendor from the home page and enter in the required information. After you've entered the vendor in the system, it will show up in the drop down menu here. Keep in mind that this does not force you to always order from this vendor, it is simply a guide to a preferred vendor. The next section is the Part Type section. This will define if the part is an item, asset, or lot, as we discussed at the beginning of the video. If both of these checkboxes are left unchecked, the part will be considered an item. If you check the Require Serial Number checkbox, that will designate this part as an asset. And every time you receive in this product, you'll have to enter in a serial number. You also have some additional information around the asset that you can enter here. If this is a lot controlled product, you'll want to check Requires Lot. Notice that you get a group of additional information that's specific to lot controlled products. You can specify a lot number format here, using a regular expression. We also get the option of four additional lot custom fields. This is information that will be collected when receiving each new lot. If Require Lot Custom is checked, the user receiving the product will not be allowed to proceed without entering the information into that field. The Lot Custom 1 description is the label that the user will see on the device when entering in the information. Again, you can also specify a format using a regular expression. Checking Perishable will require the user to enter in an expiration date when receiving in the lot. Strict kitting is only used if the products are a part of a kit and require all the child parts to be part of the same lot. FIFO and LIFO stands for first in first out and last in first out. Enabling one of these will direct the person picking to the product to the oldest or newest lot depending on which option is chosen. However for this demonstration we're going to use an item part so I'm going to uncheck this. Under the other information section we have a number of additional fields to enter in information about this part. Client description is an alternate description field. If you have a different description of a product when selling to a customer, you can enter that here. Image URL allows for a hosted image to be attached to this part. Cost is what you pay for the product and rate is what you sell it for. Keep in mind that the cost and rate can be changed on a transaction to transaction basis if you buy or sell your product at various rates. Shipping weight can be entered here. This information can be sent to a shipping software such as ShipStation if you are integrated. Next we move on to our nine custom fields. These can be used to track any additional information about this part. Also, the labels for these fields can be changed. Notice that I've changed the labels here to demonstrate some common uses for the custom fields. There are some advanced features that can be used with custom fields as well, such as cross-reference. 
Custom 2, 3, and 4 can be set up to cross-reference your part. This means if I scan this UPC number here, the system will know that I'm referring to SKU 1, 2, 3. There can be up to three cross-references for each product. However, the cross-reference in Top Shelf must be unique, meaning you cannot have the same UPC pointing to multiple parts. Once I click Save at the top, you'll get a few more options down at the bottom. You can specify a put-away bin for this part. If this part is a kit, you can specify the kit contents that make up this part, a unit of measure multiplier, and a reorder point. If you have any questions on any of these, please see the help file or the video associated with this feature. To view this part record or to make any future changes, navigate to Search Parts from the home page and you'll see it listed here. Please note that there are search fields here to narrow your search once you get multiple parts. Keep in mind that parts can also be entered in via SNAP, the import-export tool. If you have any questions about SNAP, please see the help file under the SNAP section. Now that we have a warehouse and a bin within that warehouse and a part record, we can start receiving inventory. One of the quickest ways to add inventory in Top Shelf is through the mobile phone or the barcode scanner under the Inventory section under Add Client Inventory. First, I'm going to select which part I want to add. Here's our SKU that we created. I'm going to select which bin I want to add it to. Here's the bin we created in the last section. And the quantity to add. I'm going to select one and hit Submit. Inventory has been added. Let's jump back over to the admin console to take a look at the inventory we just added. Remember that this is an item type part, so to find it we want to go up to the top and go to Search Items, and we can see SKU123, Quantity 1, in bin A001. Another way to add inventory is through the admin console. Please note that anything done in the admin console does not have an audit trail. If you add inventory on a mobile barcode scanner or on a smartphone, there is an audit trail for each action. To add inventory on the admin console, go to Create Items, enter the part that you wish to add, the bin that you wish to put it in, and the quantity. Click Save, and we can look and see that the items have been added. Now we have two in the same bin. Only item and asset type parts can be added this way. A lot controlled product requires a receiving transaction to be created for traceability. Let's take a look at how to do that now. To create a receiving transaction, navigate to Create Receiving, enter in the vendor that you're going to receive the product from. In this section, it's asking which warehouse are you going to receive this into. Since we only have one, I'm going to select the Training Warehouse. We're going to select a transaction type. These can be customized under the Admin section. When we're done, click Save and it's going to ask you which products we're going to receive. I'm going to receive in the SKU 123, enter in a quantity, and click Save Line. This can be repeated for multiple lines on a transaction. If you want, you can print out a document by going to Select a Document and selecting one of the documents here. These documents come complete with barcodes to be used with a barcode scanner. Now that we have a receiving transaction created, we need to receive against it once the product arrives in the warehouse. On the mobile device, I'm going to go to Shipping Receiving, into Receiving, and I'm going to scan or search for that document number that we created. And you see here that it says SKU123, quantity 1 ordered, but we have not received any yet. So I'm going to scan or tap on this. I'm going to enter in which bin I'm going to receive it into. Since we only have one, I'm going to select A001 and the quantity to be received. I'm going to click Save. Notice that it says Fulfilled. Once I'm finished, there's no more lines to be filled, so I'm going to hit Complete. If we take a look back in the Admin Console, we see that we have Receiving Transaction 1 that's been received complete. Also, if we want to take a look at the added inventory, go again to Search Items, and we see that we now have three added to bin A001. I know this is a lot of information for one video, so let's recap of some of what we've gone over. We've gone over the three different part types, items, assets, and lots, the custom fields in each part record that can be customized, including the cross-reference fields like UPC codes or ASIN numbers. We've gone over adding inventory with a mobile device like a smartphone or barcode scanner using the Add Client Inventory feature. We've also gone over adding inventory on the Admin Console going to Create Items or Create Asset. And we've also gone over creating receiving transaction and receiving inventory against that transaction. There's also the method of importing inventory with the SNAP tool. Please talk to your support rep or see the help guide for more information on SNAP. 
If you have any other questions regarding topics related to this video or any other Top Shelf feature, please visit our website at www.scoutsft.com, visit the help section when logged into Top Shelf, or give us a call anytime.